Singapore has created new land using a non-traditional method for the first time. The 800-hectare land reclamation project at Pulau Tekong involves a polder, which uses 50% less sand. It's about the size of two Tropayo towns. And authorities say the reclaimed land will be used for military training purposes and will free up space on the mainland. This can be used for new homes and amenities, as Rachel Ting reports. This is Singapore's first polder, a low-lying piece of land which was once part of the sea. It's protected by a 10-kilometre-long raised structure called a coastal dike. It reduces Singapore's need for sand when reclaiming land. If this polder were to be reclaimed with traditional methods, this entire lower-lying area that you see here would have been filled entirely with sand. Instead, authorities have built this coastal dike which I'm currently standing on and this helps to guard the entire polder against sea level rise. This is actually the first time that Singapore has managed to reclaim land below mean sea levels. The dike stands up to 6 metres high, while the rest of the polder lies about 1.2 metres below average sea level. But with the polder, the challenge is keeping the water out, so a water management system is in place to prevent inland flooding. On rainy days, rainwater is collected in this stormwater pond that can hold the same amount of water as 2,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Excess water is channeled through a 45-kilometre-long network of drains to this pumping station. From here, the water is pumped out into the sea. The central pumping station prevents water from stagnating on dry days. The entire polder now occupies the northwestern tip of Pulau Tekong. In constructing this polder, we have adopted a variety of design and construction solutions. For example, natural materials such as the use of a hardy grass species and natural rock were adopted for the surfaces of the coastal dike to absorb wave impact and mitigate erosion. The excess soil dug out during the construction of the stormwater collection pond has also been put into good use as infilling material, helping to reduce the volume of sand use. The Housing and Development Board carried out the land reclamation works first announced in 2016 by Prime Minister Lawrence Wong, who was the National Development Minister at the time. HDB adds that as Singapore's first, the exact cost of the polder can only be determined after operating it for a period of time. HDB drew expertise from the Netherlands, known for the world's highest standards for dike safety. HDB also worked with end parks and nature groups to identify and transplant endangered plant species before the works begin. It says similar species of flora and fauna continue to be observed now and the impact to the surrounding environment is expected to be negligible. The polder's long-term care will come under Singapore's National Water Agency PUB and the Defence Ministry. With climate change bringing more intense rainfall and rising sea levels, the polder offers an effective solution addressing both challenges. The coastal dike protects polder from sea level rise, while the extensive drainage network pre prevents flooding during intense storms. Authorities say polders may be used as a coastal protection and reclamation method elsewhere if deemed feasible. And to tell us more about how Singapore can benefit from empoldering, I'm joined by David Ng, who's chairman of the Civil and Structural Engineering Technical Committee at the Institution of Engineers in Singapore. Now, David, thanks for joining us today. Now, we just heard in that passage, in that package about Singapore's first polder. Can you tell us more about how it works and also why it's significant for Singapore? Well, the way that polder is being constructed is quite different from the conventional uh, reclamation method. First, you have to construct a dike all around the perimeter of the reclamation area, and then you will fill, infill the sand to actually a, a level lower than the sea level. And then you will pump out the sea from the polder area, and then you form the dry land for functional use. So by doing that, you actually save a lot of sand use, as, as what has been mentioned earlier. But the, 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 uh, the, the trade-off is that you have to pump off the water that's been collected within the polder area that's actually lower than the sea level. That means that the, the water from the, within the polder area will not be able to flow out naturally into the sea. So in this case, how is it special when Singapore is using it in this particular instance mm. at Pulau Tokong? So it is the first time being used in Singapore as well as in this region. Uh, and in, but in, in Netherlands, all this is actually quite common. 
so we are trying this area, this, this as a first time use, I think uh, main, main driven factor will be the sand uh, resource, resource shortage because uh, for Singapore to do reclamation, the main constraint is always the sand and uh, the filling, infilling material. It, it, it may not be sand, but it may be other material, but it still needs a lot of quantity of it. So by, by reducing the quantity of sand in, in the construction of polder to replace the conventional construction, uh, definitely it will be an advantage for Singapore. And then we'll, Singapore will be able to reclaim uh, more land uh, without the, the dependency on the sand resources that we need to import from overseas. Mm, and in your assessment, how suitable is this method for use here in Singapore? And how will we measure if it is in fact the right solution mm. for the country? Well, it is definitely beneficial from the way I see it. Uh, how we can measure it, there are a few key, maybe the, we call it the uh, factor that can help us to evaluate whether this, this is actually the right method. First is the, um, the value of land that you actually created against the construction cost by using polder, if you find that that is actually more cost effective in creating the land that you need, definitely then it will be a, a good solution for us. And the other one is that uh, whether the, pole, the land reclamation that we created by polder, is it able to help us um, tackle the rising sea concern, rising sea level concern, meaning that is it able to act as a coastal protection structures? Uh, is it able to be uh, an adaptable design that we are able to rely on it as a coastal protection structure? So in this way, it's possible because, as I said earlier, you, we need to build a dike and a perimeter in order to prevent the sea level, seawater from coming into the polder. So that dike actually, uh, potentially, it can be uh, increased in the level. We can build a higher dike in the future where the sea level is rising higher and higher. So with that, we can actually protect the sea level from intruding into the land, into the polder. And, and that, if it's able to effectively protect us as a coastal protection structures, and also is able to create land uh, with a lower cost, then definitely it's a good method to be adopted. Right. I want to get into rising sea levels in just a bit, but first, mm. what are the conditions required for effective poldering and how much land can we reclaim in the future using this method? Mm. Compared to a conventional reclamation method, which we need to reclaim the land to a level a few meters higher than the sea level, which means that we're going to use a lot more sand, a lot more infill material. So by having polder, uh, it is definitely saving sand and uh, it allows us to then apply this polder method to a wider area. So a lot of uh, offshore island that we have, uh, we can actually apply polder method to reclaim a bigger, area, bigger land. Uh, this this includes Pula Ubin. We can actually reclaim, uh, become a bigger Pula Ubin. And then in area, in the coastline area that in the mainland that is low lying, we can also apply a polder method to actually uh, reclaim a bigger land and at the same time protect the coastline with polder system. Mm, so there are a lot of uh, potential users yes. for this in the future yes. if it goes well in this case. Can you also tell us, as you mentioned, the rising sea levels earlier, mm. how far do these polders actually go in mm. guarding against rising sea levels? Can mm. they be used in tandem with other methods uh, available right now? Yes, polder is one of the possible solutions in, in terms of uh, constructing coastal protection structures to protect our coastline and in as well as our mainland that's low lying. Uh, the, the, key, the key reason we are, we are concerning is actually whether the coastline or the dike is adaptable to the rising sea level. So in this case, the dike is built with uh, earth. So we can actually top up the dike uh, if it has been designed for, or we can design the dike to be, to be uh, able to be increased in future, uh, in, in, increase in level in the future so that we can actually uh, increase the dike level. Uh, in order to cater, to protect the, 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 the seafront from the rising sea level. Then the sea level that is rising will not be able to uh, flow inside, the, flow across the dike and then uh, damage the land or erode the land. But uh, of course, the uh, uh, shortcoming is that we always need to maintain the dike in order to ensure that the dike is uh, uh, well maintained to protect against any damages caused by wave or caused by the storm due to the climate change. Mm, so a lot of potential there, a lot mm. of exciting uh, users for the future yes. as well. So David, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. Really appreciate it. I've been chatting with David Ng from the Institution of Engineers in Singapore.